Fidel Castro, and with communist Nikita Khrushchev, amongst others. The magazine reported how Shirley and her lover, quote, talked about democratic socialist principles and how it was possible to have them both at the same time if the rich would only share their wealth more. Elsewhere in her book, she wrote about how much of a hypocrite she was when she added this contradictory statement in the All Do, quote, wanted to talk to him about how I had made a lot of money and that it made me feel elite in a world that was broke to know I could buy just about anything I wished for, unquote. Just like Jane Fonda, who's been pushing for gun control for years, who was stopped by law enforcement officers on the freeway and her car was found to contain many pistols and weapons, firearms. Hypocrites and liars. However, nowhere in her book did she say that she had freely donated any of her own wealth to the relief of the poor. Apparently, she believes that the communist ideas about wealth sharing are acceptable only as long as she does not have to share her wealth like she wants the other rich to do. You see, most rich purport to be socialist, but in actual practice, none of them really are. None of them would give away their wealth to the poor, ever. Yet, they pretend to be liberal, socialist, Marxist, in reality. They demonstrate that they are exactly the opposite. They are liars and hypocrites. For the whole communist socialist idea is for the little people, you and I, who are to be their slaves in the New World Order. Miss McLean has since gone on a nationwide tour promoting her newfound religious views to the public. Newsweek magazine reported in 1987 that she had made a great deal of money explaining her new thoughts to others. Quote, since McLean began her tour in January 1987, more than 10,000 people in 15 cities have paid $300 admission fee. Unquote. Well, you know me, folks. I have absolutely nothing against that. If she could have got $1,000 ahead admission free, it would be okay with me. Now, 10,000 times 300 equals $3 million. I still have no complaint with that. This is the United States of America. If somebody wants it, give it to them. If they want to pay it, if they're that stupid, that's fine with me. I believe that people should be giving somebody something, though. But I also believe that if they're stupid enough to pay it, then they should be taken. That's how you learn. And a lot of people would disagree with me, but I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry. That's what I believe. Obviously, Shirley's tours have proven to be both popular and lucrative. The Newsweek article on her seminar mentioned a little of what she teaches in them, the following of her few of her comments. Quote, the earth is moving off its axis, she says, and only the collective consciousness of mankind can right it. For the spiritually inclined, a window of light will appear on those days, August 16th and 17th, 1987, that McLean says will allow us to rise to a higher plane of cosmic understanding, unquote, pure bullshit, pure crap, pure new age mesmerism, if you will, for nothing happened on those dates. Evangelist McLean became Dr. McLean when she reported some of her new cures for two of the world's most serious medical problems, AIDS and cancer of the abdomen. According to the Newsweek article, she told our, her audience, quote, they, or those who paid to hear her in the 15 cities on the tour, all got to hear McLean's pronouncements on such subjects as AIDS. She thinks sufferers are sick because they have been bereft of love necessary to sustain the balance of health and cancer. For cancer of the abdomen, she advises putting patients in a yellow room because yellow is the color frequency of that part of the body." Unquote. More New Age mesmerism bullshit crap. And to think her patients only have to pay $300 for such wisdom. But Dr. McLean is not as dumb as one might think. The Newsweek magazine article reported, quote, everyone who attended had to sign waivers absolving the seminar's organizers from responsibility for psychological injury, unquote. How clever, how clever of Miss McLean. 
so someone in charge of arranging her seminars is aware that her ideas might cause psychological damage to those attending, and they have moved to protect her from malpractice lawsuits. Now, not only was this New Age evangelist making money on her personal lecture tours, she was also making money on her best-selling books. Now, I don't know what's wrong with A. Ralph Epperson. I don't know why he's saying this, because he purports to believe in the Constitution and the principles and ideals upon which this country was based, and there is nothing wrong with making money on anyone's personal lecture tours are on their books and I can tell you right now that A. Ralph Epperson makes money on his lecture tours and on his books and that's how he makes his living. So as far as I'm concerned that is a partial discreditation of A. Ralph Epperson. As of July 1987 her book entitled Out on a Limb had sold 3 million copies and her other major seller Dancing in the Light had sold 2.2 million. Could he be jealous? Is it possible that A. Ralph Epperson is jealous of Shirley MacLaine's ability to sell books? Time Magazine reported that her five books on self-exploration and self-promotion have run to more than eight million copies. Now, to me, that's admirable. If someone can write something that is so desirable by eight million people that it sells eight million copies, I don't care what they're writing about. That's admirable. She's providing an income for herself, her family, and people are obviously buying her books because they want them. Therefore, she's supplying them with a service whether it's bullshit or not it doesn't matter that's the American way folks that's what it's all about there was a lot of people back in the early part of this century who hated automobiles and therefore Henry Ford was the devil but he sold an awful lot of them and he came under the criticism of a lot of people for doing it sorry folks that's the American way as far as I'm concerned, what A. Ralph Epperson is spouting in these few sentences here is socialism. And I admire him for his research and what he's done, and I know that he makes his living selling books and lecturing. And for him to spout this socialist attitude when he is doing the same thing is not acceptable. And he is a friend of mine, and I will certainly bring this to his attention. You know, I read this book a long time ago, and I'd forgotten that he had said these things but I certainly will bring it to his attention in fact we may talk about it on the air when he's a guest of the show and he will be a guest of the show very shortly so you can look forward to some kind of an explanation of this he says it appears as if selling the new age religion can be very profitable well Barnum and Bailey was very profitable and it was all an illusion just like the new age religion but in summary, perhaps the most cogent comment about the battle between the New Age and the Christians was made by Nesta Webster in her book entitled Secret Societies. Quote, The war now begins between the two contending principles, the Christian conception of man reaching up to God, and the secret society conception of man as God, needing no revelation from on high, and no guidance but the law of his own nature. And since that nature is in itself divine all that springs from it is praiseworthy and those acts usually regarded as sins are not to be condemned unquote you've heard me say before 